Hi, in this tutorial, we're gonna see how we can manage complex states using useReducer in React. To understand how useReducer works, let's imagine that we have a simple to-do application. And now let's say that you want to add a grocery to your to-do list. Then you would click on an add item button. With this event, we would trigger a dispatch. And this dispatch would carry on an action and payload of what we want to add to a list. After that, our dispatch triggers a reducer function which manipulates our state. As a result back, we get a new state of the items array and now we have a grocery inside of a list. Now let's say that we want to add additional item inside of our to-do list. Again, you would type in the item, you would click on add. This would also dispatch an action, but this time payload is different. And as a reducer is keeping track of our current state, it just adds this new item to our items list array. And now let's see how we can implement this in code. Go with Sloba. And welcome back. Here in the app.js file, I have very simple count application, which consists of only two buttons. One is for increasing the count, and the second one is for decreasing the count. Then we have this static h1 title with just static zero. Obviously, the purpose of this tutorial is to make this dynamic and later I will show you how you can increase the complexity of this application and manage that very easily using the use reducer hook. So let's start off by importing our use reducer hook from React. And now inside of our function app component, we can initialize our use reducer hook. This hook returns an array. And inside of this array, we have two items. Similar to use state hook, First, we receive the variable name, and the second one is the state of actually the function which updates the state of this variable. So let's call it a dispatch. And this is the usual naming convention for using the use reducer, because we are triggering different dispatches or different set of actions for updating this count. It could be to increase the count, to decrease the count, to use different set of values for increasing and decreasing and similar. Now we should initialize our use reducer hook and this use reducer hook receives two arguments. The first argument is the function of the reducer so we can call it as counter reducer and we will create this in a second and the second argument is the initial state of our variable. For count we can set it as zero and now we can use this count variable and display it here instead of this zero. Now what we need to do is we need to create this counter reducer function. So let's just create it inside of this file. Usually you want to create this inside of a separate file, but for this tutorial, this will serve the purpose. Now this reducer function takes two arguments. The first one is the state at the current time of the application. When we're just starting, it would be zero. But later, when we call this counter reducer, it will be the state at the current time when we are calling the dispatch function. And the second argument is the action, which we call or trigger using this dispatch function back. And now inside of our counter reducer, we want to check what is the type of the action that we are dispatching. And depending on the type of the action, we want to perform some different state manipulation. So the usual case is to use the switch statement because we are checking multiple use cases of action. And inside of this switch, we want to check action.type. Now let's say the first case is increment. In that case, we want to increment the count variable. And we are accessing this count using the state variable here. Or actual parameter. So we are just returning state plus one, like so. And now to trigger this action, we need to call our dispatch function and pass in increment as an action type. So here we can add new event handler. So on click, and we, what we want to call is our dispatch function here. And we want to pass in an object as an argument, and we want to set type to be the string that we created here. 
And what is considered the best practice is to store this string action types inside of a constant so you don't run into bugs because of the typos. And now let's save this file and let me open the browser. And now if you click on our plus button, we are changing and updating the state of our count variable and we are increasing it by one. That was very easy. Now let's see how we can add this minus or decrement action as well. So what we should use is this first case inside of our switch statement and we can just copy paste it. And let's just change the name of the type to decrement and let's update the operation to minus. And just make sure that you have spelling correct. So let's remove this A and let's make sure that this is the same here. So what we want to do, the minus button, so let's copy this onclick event handler as well. And we just want to dispatch this different type of action, which is decrement here. Now let's save this and let's try again. So let's refresh this application to reset the count. And if you click on the plus, we are increasing the count. But now if you click on the minus, we are decreasing the count of our application. So now let's say that we want to count the number of operations that we have inside of this count application. So this would mean that we have multiple properties. So the proper use case for this one is to use object instead of the number here or integer. So let's create a new object and let's call it initial state. And inside of this object, we're going to have two properties. The first one is going to be count and the initial state for the count is going to be zero. And the second one is going to be number of operations. And it's going to be zero at the beginning as well. And now we can use this initial state object and pass it inside of the use reducer hook as the initial state. But now in order to use it, here we, we should update the name of our variable. Instead of the count, it should be, let me see, we can call it, let's say operations. Mathematical operations, obviously. And now to access this count, we need to use this dot notation here. Now we also need to update how we are updating our operations variable. As your reducer function should always be pure function, you should never mutate your data. So instead, you should always return new object. And inside of our object, again, we want to update our count variable. So we set state.count plus one. And we want to update the number of operation. And the name of the property is num operation. And we want to increase from state.num operation and just increase it by one here. So now let's update this decrement as well. We can copy what we did on the previous step here and we just decrease the count to minus one and the number of operation is increased by one as well. So now what we want to do is we want to display this number of operation. So here we can copy this line of count and here we might say number of operations like so. And then we use this num operation property from our operations object. And now let's try. So let me decrease here the width, a refresh. You can see that we are updating the count and this is the actual amount or the value of our count. And this is the number of operation we have performed to get to this value here. And now you can see how it is easy to manage multiple properties and states on a single functional dispatch. So now let's say that we want to add additional button and let's say we want to increment our count, let's say by 10 maybe. So plus 10 and we say increment by 10, like so. And now what we can do is we can copy our case here, add another action, let's copy the type of the action here and let's increase it by 10. Now let's save it. Let me refresh. And now if we click on this single plus, we get increments by one. Here we are decrementing by one and here we start incrementing by 10. And now you can see how it's easy to add complexity and manage multiple properties on a single action here. If you are using use state hook for handling such states, it would very easily become very complex and very hard to manipulate 
and manage and keep track of what's happening. Well, that's all for this React video. And thanks for stopping by. And don't forget to subscribe. Code with Sloba. Thank you for watching the entire video. To see more React tutorials, click here.